This time 10 years ago marked a historic time for tornadoes, both in our area and all across the country. So what you see here is a snapshot from the St. Louis area. I want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Steve Templeton. And Steve, as we think about 2011, really from the get go, it was a busy year for tornadoes. Exactly right. In fact, it really started New Year's Eve 2010 going into 2011 when we had a deadly EF3 tornado strike St. Louis County. This is footage from SkyZoom of the damage in Sunset Hill. There were roofs torn off houses, cars were just flipped, and it struck a strip mall as a tornado actually crossed over Limburg Boulevard just south of Interstate 44. And you know what? There were many more tornadoes in 2011. We spoke to one family who survived one of those twisters about what they're doing differently today to stay safe. And we're digging into new research that could help protect us in the future. Ten years ago, the spring and summer of 2011, it was a year of tornadoes in our area. There was a tornado here. It came, it touched down right back here. A decade ago this weekend, 20 tornadoes struck the bi-state area. Yeah, go back and Just weeks later, the Good Friday tornado ripped through Lambert Airport in parts of North County. There it is. Oh gosh, that is a monster tornado. And on May 22nd, 2011, the Joplin tornado. More than 150 people killed, $3 billion in damage. The deadliest single tornado of the Doppler radar era. But in 2011, tornadoes also hit Alabama, Mississippi, and Oklahoma. In all, more than 1,600 tornadoes. The spring and summer of 2011 will likely be remembered as one of the most destructive and deadly tornado seasons on record. More than $28 billion in damage more than 1,600 lives lost, and six EF5 tornadoes. It was very, very scary. That was Rodney Winslow, 10 years ago after the tornado tore the roof off his Troy, Illinois home on February 27, 2011. First thing that came to our mind was our kids, and we went to get them, and we didn't have time to, to go down to the basement, so we did the best that we could underneath bunk beds, loft beds, and we really felt that the Lord was protecting us and, and just had his covering hand over us. Recently, I spoke with the Winslows about that night, 10 years ago this weekend. I remember going in and just everything was shaking around me. They spoke about the suddenness of the storm hitting, the ferocity of the winds, and how lucky they were to make it out alive, almost all unscathed. She had the two younger kids underneath her arms when the tornado hit. She had a rather large gash right down the middle of her head where uh, she felt like she had been somewhat picked up and hit the, the top of the rafter of a, of a door frame. Miraculously, I was the only one that was injured um, physically. We right. had to do a lot of therapy afterwards with our kids because they had a lot of fear. That night also changed the way they think about severe weather warnings. The first thing we did once we were out and well and recovered is we went and bought a weather radio. We're hoping we can provide more reliable and believable warnings. Dr. Roger Waxler is part of a team at the University of Mississippi working on a way to better detect tornadoes. Tornadoes emit signals in what we call the infrasound band. Waxler believes using those ultra low sound waves could act as another pair of eyes to help with real time tornado detection and giving people precious extra time to prepare. His group started developing infrasound microphones in the early 2000s to help assist governments in spotting illegal nuclear weapons tests. At the same time, his group was funded by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to study infrasound monitoring of violent weather. We have successfully detected from F-0s to F-5s uh, out to distances of, so far, 80 to 100 kilometers. Ultimately, we'll be able to provide is you know, a screen on a TV or computer with a map and tracks. There's a tornado here, and here's what it's doing. But right now, more study is needed before these arrays could be set up as an early detection system. But Waxler is confident this technology will help save lives. I think it's a big difference between hearing these sirens four or five times every season and actually seeing a map with a, a track and knowing, oh, my house is there. But many people get their warnings by emergency sirens. However, sirens are not meant to be heard by people indoors. They're really knocking on our door. Of course, you can get the latest information on TV and the radio, but if your power goes out, you won't be able to do that. 
Fortunately, there are other options. One, a NOAA weather radio programmed for your area. And as we told you, mobile phone technology has come a long way the past 10 years to help with warnings. So take a minute and download the KMOV app on your smartphone. Because as the Winslows will tell you, you can never be too prepared and always take every warning seriously. If you haven't experienced it firsthand, it's not a fear for you. Um, but if, I guess if I could say anything, I would say please take it seriously because while the tornado itself, um, the destruction that that happened during the tornado only lasted seconds um, to a minute, it the aftermath lasts for a really long time. Really struck me when uh, Jill Winslow talked about the fear her kids had and the therapy that they mm -hmm. needed and uh, kudos to her and her family for seeking that type of help out. But one of the things they did is they went out and got a NOAA weather radio. Every home and business should have one, especially for nighttime tornadoes. Yeah, and as soon as she said that, Steve, I thought maybe I should get one for myself. I checked online if you're interested. You can get one for less than $40. That's $40 that could be the difference between life and death if a big storm ever goes through.